No, I, I mean, the transformation, think about it, instantaneous settlement, right. bonds and stocks. Um, no middlemen, we're gonna bring down fees even more dramatically. Welcome to Token Topics, Distributive Ledger Technology, XRP, XDC, XLM, and stable coins, and the amazing possibilities of what can be tokenized are the topics. You're not going to want to miss this video. Please do hit the like, share, and subscribe. Remember, I'm not a financial advisor. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and dig in. All right, Decent family, I have a special announcement. The new app version 521.1 has been released. The latest update includes improvements to the user interface and experience of the Discovery tab browser for enhanced user convenience. One of the new features is it's easy to change the network. The UI UX has been added so that when visiting a decentralized app such as OpenSeas, for example, you can immediately change the network to use when connecting your wallet. And I'm gonna show you in this clip. All right, so from your app homepage, you're gonna go down to the bottom center where it says Discovery, tap on that, and then we're gonna scroll all the way down to OpenC, tap on OpenC, and you're gonna tap on Go. And because we're going to the OpenC website, tap on I Understand, because it's a secondary website. Once OpenC opens up, it's gonna ask you for what network you wanna to connect to. Now, the standard network is Ethereum. You tap on that, you can see the nice change. We scroll all the way down and we're going to tap on Clayton EVM. There's regular Clayton network, but we want the Clayton EVM. So tap on Clayton EVM, then tap on select. And a nice feature, if you don't have the Clayton network, just tap on add account and the new user interface is going to automatically bring you to add account. So just going to keep it standard clay tap on create it creates the account and now we are on the Clayton EVM network tap on yes I want to connect to that so now it's fully connected to OpenSea just showed you how simple it is to connect to the Clayton EVM now the Clayton EVM has been added to the list of selectable networks to ensure a stable connection of the Clayton wallet when accessing OpenSea's decentralized app to connect the Clayton wallet at OpenSea make sure to select Clayton EVM from the network list. Now, this is important. If you're accessing Clayton-based decentralized app sites, such as ClaySwap or ClayStation, other than OpenSeas, please connect your wallet by selecting the standard Clayton network. It There's a lot of uncertainty in the cryptocurrency industry right now, and that's extremely understandable considering that FTX collapse recently happened and now there's talks about possible tether collapsing. We're at the end of the year. People are pulling out money, getting prepared to pay taxes. That's why we're seeing a huge dip in this market right now. A lot of people are uncertain of what 2023 holds, but we know without a doubt, or those who have been subscribed to this channel or have been doing their research and know exactly where the big money is going it's going into dlt technology distributive ledger technology is the future a lot of these projects are going to go to zero they're going to vanish and we've heard this from a lot of experts i'm sure a lot of you already have heard that charles hoskinson the head of cardano recently just stated that he believes that possibly there could be a settlement between ripple and the sec in the 15th that alone is going to be excellent for people who are holding XRP, but it's going to be catastrophic for people who are holding Ethereum, Bitcoin, or all these other altcoins. Because a lot of people are probably going to roll their money into XRP because they know that it's going to finally have clarity. And once the dust settles, these other projects, there's going to be some projects that are going to make it, but a lot of them are going to be destroyed between now and the next couple of years. So this is why it's imperative to do your homework and understand this technology because if you're putting a lot of money into something, you need to know without a doubt that you're going to come out a winner. If you're putting your money, your hard-earned money, into distributive ledger assets such as XRP, XDC, XLM, Algorand, other DLT technologies, you're going to come out a winner. I want to play this clip from Larry Fink, who recently spoke 
about the future of what he believes, and he's stating the same thing, that a lot of these projects are going to go to zero, and it's DLT technology, which is distributive ledger technology, is the future. Has this changed your view of crypto at all? You, have, you now have a deal with Coinbase, um, and, and yet you were always sort of also, I think, a bit of a uh, skeptic of all of this. Oh, I actually believe most of the companies are not going to be around. I still believe that. I do believe because that. They're, because they're now real, they're frauds, they're what? Well, I mean, look, think about FTX. I mean, you can look back now. FTX created it. Its failure was it's creating its own token. It was not a DeFi. It wasn't a, it wasn't a, uh, you know, a, a ledger that was open to the world. It was a closed ledger. Right. It was not distributed. So the whole foundation of what crypto is, it's supposed to be a distributed ledger that is across the system. I actually believe this technology is going to be very important. I am, I, you know, look at it. We have been part of the huge revolution in investing through ETFs. We believe that ETFs will be changing the whole way we invest. Many people still use it as a means, well, people are investing it f for indexing. No, the majority of people who are putting money in an index, in an ETFs are active investors that are buying exposure. The entire bond market is being transformed as we talk right now. I believe the next generation for markets, the next generation for securities will be, will be tokenization of securities. Um, we will, and if we could have that distributed ledger that we know every beneficial owner, every beneficial uh, seller, we all have our, our, our code right. of who's buying, who's selling, instantaneous settlement. And think about it, it changes the whole ecosystem. You don't need trust banks. But does that disrupt you eventually? Because you are custodian all of these we don't, assets. No, we're not a custodian. We're not, we, we don't, we use third party custodians in everything we do. In everything you do? We don't, we're not a custodian bank. So, you're, so your goal, in that, by the way, I don't it's, think that it's, he it's, was it's, technically a custodian either, which is a separate issue. I think they were. I don't know if there was a real custodian in that closed ledger, but that's right. a whole other story. Uh, you should ask them that question. <laughs> um, uh, no, I, I mean, the transformation, think about it, instantaneous settlement, right. bonds and stocks, um, no middlemen, we're going to bring down fees even more dramatically. Um, as for me, I don't have to vote on any shares anymore because the beneficial owner will do all the voting. They'll okay, have well, it. They'll and know. that's where I want to go with this conversation. Okay, I knew I was going to take you there. Th thank you. <laughs> right there, you heard it from the horse's mouth. Larry Fink himself, the tokenization of securities, but it doesn't just stop with there. It's bonds, gold, silver, and any precious metal, all types of data. This was posted by Jesus Herencia on LinkedIn. And if you're on LinkedIn, you can follow me or connect with me. So he put blockchain and what can be tokenized. And this is perfect for what we were just uh, viewing. The list goes on. Trademarks, patents, food and beverages, coffees, any kind of consumable. Precious metals, as they just spoke on. Financial instruments, uh, collectibles, devices, rare cars, electronic devices, medical devices, merchandising, as I stated, data, derivatives, hybrid securities, fixed income certificates. You can wrap um, real estate into NFTs, Every anything. The transaction of value at literally almost the speed of light, speed of information through the internet is revolutionizing the financials industry. One of my recent videos, I was just explaining how Ripple is literally taking over Europe. And all the connections I explained in that video. And UK, we know that the United Kingdom and all of Europe is really pushing and accelerating distributive ledger technology forward. And uh, I thought I saw this awesome post that the UK Japan Digital Partnership will indeed accelerate international digital collaboration. Anybody who's been holding XRP for a long time, they know that Japan has an excellent relationship with not only Ripple, but they love XRP. If you're new to Ripple and XRP, know that Japan loves it. So the UK and Japan Digital Partnership is definitely going to accelerate. And let's look through this. It's going to make it easier for businesses to operate in both countries. Develop the unique digital strengths of both countries. It's going to increase resilience 
to cyber attacks. Promote competition and support innovation in digital markets. And that is only scratching the surface. Now, Stellar is another, another distributive ledger technology that's going to be revolutionizing retail remittances, where Ripple is more for enterprise use case, and Zinfin's XDC network is more for global trade and finance, which is more complex. I've gone over that in many videos. If you're new and you're watching this, please subscribe if you would like to stay informed. So this was posted from the Stellar Development Foundation. And Stellar was built with central bank digital currencies in mind. Now, I'm not a huge fan of CBDCs. I believe that if it is going to be conducted, there has to be a bill of rights, especially in nations that consider democracy. I am not a fan of China's approach to a, a, a digital yuan. I am not a fan of that at all. In fact, I heard recently that they might have the ability to literally take your asset away if you do not spend it, which is controlling you, trying to make you spend it. You can't save it. That's ridiculous. That's, tyr that's tyranny. Anyway, so central bank digital currencies. Not a fan, as I just stated, but if we have a certain law and frameworks put in place and have a privacy measures, it could possibly work. But this is where the world is headed, unfortunately. So continuing again, so Stellar was built with central bank digital currencies in mind to allow trusted issuers to create digital representations of their assets, basically a digital fiat running on the rails of these ledgers. And anybody that's new that's learning about this, it's not just Stellar. In fact, Ripple, Ripple's platform enables for stable coins to be created on the XRP ledger. And speaking of stable coins and distributive ledger technology, another DLT technology is the Zinfin's XTC network. And Impel is working with Zinfin's XTC network, and they created a stable coin, Fluent, a Fluent stable coin on distributive ledger technology. Now, when it comes to cross border payments, the king is XRP by far. Nobody. No other company has as many partnerships and connected with financial institutions and banks other than Ripple. Ripple is literally leading the DLT technology. They are the, the heartbeat, I would say, of DLT technology. But then we have these other great projects that are going to be extremely valuable assets, such as the XDC network and Stellar Lumens, the XLM token or actually coin these are their own blockchain so technically even though people call them tokens these are coins just as we heard larry fink speak the ceo from blackrock he was talking about dlt technology the stable coins built on these networks are the future this was posted a month ago but anybody who needs to get filled in it was an awesome announcement that fluid finance and moonstone bank have developed a partnership the XTC network also has a connection to Lloyd's Bank through the Dazzle. XTC network was the first blockchain to join the International Forfeiting Trade Association. But as I stated, the king of cross-border payments is XRP. Settlement in second, not days. This gives us a good picture of Ripple's connections. Brazil, India, Indonesia, Malaysia, United Kingdom, United States. Even though we don't have full clarity, you can still use XRP in the United States. Uh, Thailand, Poland, Turkey, Vietnam, Malaysia, the Philippines, Mexico. The list goes on. It doesn't stop. The XDC network is not the only DLT technology that's going to be working with trade finance. Ripple will be heavily involved as well. States here, supercharging trade finance with line of credit for SMEs. Small and medium-sized enterprises often need to secure outside capital to cover the time lag between when they collect the revenue versus when they must pay suppliers and employees. The time, expense, and capital commitments associated with traditional cross-border payments only adds to the cash gap. There's a trade gap in the world, and that's a huge issue in the world right now. Now, for these SMEs that often already operate on razor-thin margins. Now, to secure lines of credit through traditional bank, small and medium 
size enterprises regularly pay expensive rates, commit months due diligence and approvals, and then pledge receivables or even personal guarantees. Many banks will also bundle their line of credits, requiring customers to use their higher price correspondent banking services. In contrast, customers using on ODL, which is XRP, can quickly and affordably source capital through Ripple's line of credit offering companies can purchase a digital asset XRP from Ripple on credit with no hidden fees and with much faster approval times, to say the least, than traditional banks. Another important DLT distributive ledger is the Stellar Network that's going to be working in tandem with all these other networks. It's all about interoperability. One business that is working with both Ripple and Stellar is Novati. And Rehive helps Novati launch an AUDD stablecoin on the Stellar network. Now the company Circle has created a USDC stablecoin. And they also have a stablecoin that's built on the Stellar network. And I believe that that is going to be the key stablecoin for Circle as far as USDC goes. If anything happens to Tether, which I believe very much will happen in the future, there's going to be a few stable coins that are going to take the spotlight. Binance has a stable coin that's definitely going to be in the spotlight. And also, I believe Circle's USDC, the particular one that's built on the Stellar blockchain, is going to be a leader. So what's next for Novati's stablecoin, the AUDD? Like other prominent stablecoins used today, such as USDC, Novati is following a similar playbook to launch the AUDD built on the Stellar blockchain. Speaking of stablecoins, all these DLT technologies working together to create a new financial world. The global stablecoin races on. This is put out by Ripple. 2022 might be well remembered as the year of the stablecoin. A lot of work in stablecoins has been conducted this year. Now, despite getting off to a rocky start with the implosion of Terra, the stablecoin sector rebounded to reach a new high of $1 trillion in monthly trading volume in August and has been on the agenda of the World Economic Forum, the Committee of Payments and Market Infrastructure, U.S. regulators, as they continue to evaluate its role and impact on economic markets. As stablecoin growth continues and more and more use cases are explored in the border and crypto landscape, Ripple has also picked up the pace and gained traction with the new partners like Stably and Stasis. Together with Ripple, They'll be tapping the XRP ledger as a fast, low-cost, scalable blockchain that offers clear liquidity, reliability, and interoperability. As I always stated, that's the key right there. Advantage for stablecoin issuers. Choosing the right, right blockchain and digital currency solution. Stablecoin benefits from the transaction advantage of a cryptocurrency coupled with the stability, hence the name of fiat currency. This opens up new doors to further financial inclusion and accelerate economic growth by enabling digital purchasing histories and greater access to credit and by removing frictions from cross-border payments for companies of all sizes. The XRP ledger is best suited to support stablecoins at scale, built to support the tokenization of any asset as we've gone over the tokenization of pretty much anything. XRP Ledger can handle high volume of transactions that settle in mere seconds and cost only a fraction of a cent. This native token functionality also makes it easy for issuers to create, issue, and manage any asset without the need for a central intermediary. The XRP Ledger's built-in authorized trust lines feature also ensures that stable coins and other issued tokens can only be held by the account that the issuer themselves authorize for an added layer of security. If you'd like to read through this full article, I'm going to put the link to it down below. You get to keep your crypto safe with a decent biometric wallet. Just in time for the holidays, it makes a great gift. What talks about exchanges going down and uncertainty in the market, it's imperative to take your crypto off the exchanges and put it onto a hardware wallet. I'm going to put the links in the description below. As I stated before, there is so much uncertainty in the market right now and it could be a little scary for some people that are getting new to and new into this and they might not know what projects to put their money into but as we have heard from high 
level executives of different companies, CEOs, they know where this technology is headed. As we stated before, distributive ledger technology. That's all I have for the video. I hope everybody enjoyed it. If you did enjoy, please don't forget to hit the like, share, and subscribe with friends and family. Thank you everyone for watching another edition of Token Topics.